Hi everyone, my name is Shelly and welcome to my cross stitch channel, Oh My Ada. It's a channel all about cross stitch and my journey through the multiple patterns and purchases that I enjoy stitching. Today is not my regular floss tube. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I made some book purchases back in September, which isn't that long ago. Today is October 3rd, 2021, and um, this is the first book I'm going to share with you. This is Across Stitcher's Oriental Odyssey by Joan Elliott. And these are the patterns that she created for design work. My, my copy of the book I bought used on Amazon for $14.99. I did want the hardcover. And when I purchased the books, I try to get one in like new condition because that's my preference. Um, it does come with the dust jacket and exactly where my fingers are at the bottom. It tells you Joan Elliott for Design Works Crafts. Now, um, this is copyrighted from 1988, so it's been around a while, but I looked it up on Amazon, and for the hardcover book, like I'm sharing with you today, you can get cop 32 copies as low as 419. And then if you're getting the paperback, you can get, they have eight used copies for as low as $10.99. Um, if you would like to buy a new copy, you can get one as low as $25.01 on Amazon with Prime shipping. So sometimes if you see something and you're anxious and you want it in your hot little hands, Prime is perfect because you can get it in two days. Now, I purchased three books at the same time. This is my favorite of the three books, and that's why I'm starting with this one. But um, I would like to share the other books with you. So if you have uh, any feelings, um, positively or negatively, about this flip through, I'd love to hear them before I record the other ones. So one one item I suppose I will share with you is that the designs are premised to be stitched on Ada. It looked like as I went through each uh, chart has at least one metallic, but it looks like all of the metallic is gold and it's just that one metallic DMC per pattern which she uses as a common thread. Many of her patterns do require French knots. I, I know that some of you loathe French knots and you'd rather use beads. And if that's the case, I would recommend doing these or stitching these on 32 count, even weave or linen. And then you can make it more personalized and maybe use those beads. Um, I'm going to try Petite Treasure Braid instead of the DMC Metallic. I, I just don't like using them. All right. Um, the only other um, the only other piece of information you might want is there's a lot of back stitching. I don't know that um, you care if you start in the center or not. I know back in the 80s, I typically did because that's what I was told to do. And I think that's what many people do. But since I came back to stitching, what I found is I'm more of an upper left start. So let's go ahead and get into our first Oriental Lady because all the patterns are a celebration of Japan and China through the eyes of Joan Elliott. So our first stitch is Oriental Lady Beauty, Oriental, Oriental Lady Beauty. And here she is, you can see her, and um, she's glorious. 
she has um, mauves, and then in the in the circle above her head, which is to represent heaven, there are flowers, um, and it's really just a celebration of female. The wisteria. I'm moving away. Sorry. There is wisteria, which seems to be maybe the way Joan Elliot describes it, an aphrodisiac which seduces men to the shores. And then the violets and mobs symbolize strength and beauty, self-knowledge, and undying love. And then there are plum blossoms, and that represents change and renewal. So there's a lot going on here. And for this, um, this lady, this pattern is more about spring. At least that's what Joan Elliott says. Finally, before I switch to the next uh, view, I'd like to point out this smaller motif right here. And I love that there's this option of her face and the wisteria and not necessarily of the kimono that you can see the fan in that and her beauty shines through so it might some of you might just want to stitch the the circle and I love that that option is given to us here for this stitch you can see me trying to balance it and keep it steady you have both a panda and you have poppies. Both of these designs are based on feng shui. And over on the other side of the page, she explains the symbolisms and how that works. The panda with the bamboo and then the poppies. And if you look right here, that character, oops, that character on the poppies is the character for tranquility, which to me is very soothing. I like that idea. And I also like the enduring nature of the bamboo. Now, she does give you three ways to finish, as you can see, because they're smalls. You could do the panda in a card, which is right here. She also has the panda in a pillow, and then it could simply be made into a sachet or a gift bag if you don't want um, or you don't use sachets. So I think these are wonderful smalls, and they might even be great to give as gifts. The four designs you see on this page represent the four elements, which are wood, fire, earth, and water. And if you give me a moment, I will go through each one, but I need to put a paper on the pages to prevent showing the pattern. But I think you'll get a better image of these as I show you the larger size. All right, let me give you a tour of this design because I, all designs are going to be the same. So up at the top in this area of the design, that's going to be the symbol for the element or the word for wood. And we have um, bamboo and bamboo represents wisdom. So. If I'm reading it correctly, this is the symbol for wisdom. And then all of the patterns have the yin-yang symbol at the bottom, uh, which is a balance of uh, yin, female, and yang, masculine. And in every um, yin-yang symbol such as this, there will always be dark in the light section and light in the dark section to represent balance. The second element is fire and you can see the gorgeous reds and the plums and the symbol here is for prosperity. 
at the top you have the word for fire the focus is prosperity and again the yin yang symbol at the bottom and I just feel that those red plums are stunning. And if you like the pictures that you're seeing, the patterns are colored this way as well. And in fact, I think the pattern itself is more stunning than these uh, small samples we're seeing. So here are some chrysanthemums that represent earth. And I really love the symbolism behind the uh, chrysanthemum, which is knowledge, worldly knowledge. It says oh, wisdom, um, higher wisdom. And I like that. And it's associated with the female. Here you have a stunning yellow. So. Our last element is water, and that blue color with the purples is so relaxing. And water symbolizes um, the water lilies. Joan Elliott doesn't distinguish in this pattern between water lilies and lotus. They are both flower blooming plants, but there are differences, and she doesn't distinguish between the two nor do I think she has to, but this is symbolism for longevity. All right. And I can't decide which one I would want. And so I believe I'm going to stitch all four of those on the same pattern, on the same fabric, because I don't think of them as individual. I think of them maybe in a two by two block and um, hanging that, I think that would be stunning. I'm curious, would you stitch each element individually or would you stitch them all together? Maybe there is only one element that you're drawn to. Uh, let me know in the comments. This is ironic because this is kimono row. And here are four distinctly beautiful kimonos and they're stitched on the same piece of fabric. You don't need to tell me that. I know you can see that with your own eyes. But what I find ironic is I would want to stitch the kimonos separately uh, while I wanted to stitch the elements together. And that's what I love about cross stitch. We all have different, we all have different visions and um, I love hearing what you're interested in as well. One more element that I like about the book is that she shows us two traditional um, kimonos that symbolize wealth, good fortune, prosperity. They're elaborate. They are no longer everyday wear of Japan, but they're kept for special occasions. The blue kimono is for um, a wedding, and then the other kimono is a child's kimono. So she, um, she has filled her book as a resource on some of her um, findings from her research. By no means am I saying that her research should stand alone. If you're intrigued by any of these patterns, the internet has made the world an open book and we can look into the histories of these rich cultures. But this can give you a starting point, of course. There are a total of three fancy ladies in the book. This is fancy lady number two representing grace. You can see the idea of movement in the circle around her head, there is willow blowing in the gentle breeze. You can also see the flowers, the peonies up and down the garment, representing beauty. And then this is created to evoke a sense of ease and contentment. I, I think it does a good job. I don't know about you, 
but again, another gorgeous lady by Joan Elliott. Can we have too many of these women? I don't think so. Here is a gorgeous wall hanging, a trio of flowers, and she also, Joan Elliott also gives the idea of maybe doing them individually as cards as well, or pillows. I know many of you like to make pillows, but I think this is a gorgeous wall hanging with three different flowers. Uh, we have morning glories, orchids, which are my favorite, and iris on the bottom. Now, ultimately, I would switch this or I would stitch this orchid right away, but I found an even more gorgeous one later on. So I'll show you that when I get to it. Just in case you missed it, there is a character in with the orchid, and the orchid is considered one of the four noble uh, plants, but that symbol is for happiness. And the plant itself, the flower, represents friendship. Believe it or not, I got through the entire book and realized that I never stopped to add this picture as well. Um, so it's not at the end. I'm putting it in right between. And the Chinese symbols symbolize harmony and tranquility. As you can see, we have um, two similar patterns. We have the cherry blossom in a circular pattern on a napkin with the chickadee in the middle. Uh, I don't think I would stitch this as a napkin, a kerchief, or a tablecloth, but I really am enamored of this second style right here. I just don't know how I would finish it. Um, do you have any recommendations? What might you do? Yeah, it could be a pillow, but maybe we can come up with something different than a pillow. Do you know how the cherry blossoms came to be in Washington, D.C.? I saw a couple stories, so even I'm not exactly sure, but they were shipped to the United States in... 1912-ish, and they were shipped to Seattle, and then Seattle to D.C., but there were problems with the trees, and U.S. agriculture destroyed them, and so um, they sent 3,000 more trees, and our first chair to be planted along the Potomac, and the first cherry blossom festival was in 1927. But Lady Bird Johnson received another 3,800 of the trees uh, from Japan. And um, that was around 1965. And I'm not sure why the additional trees that much later. Here are a couple more gorgeous flowers but I think I'm going to share them with you individually on the next pages. I just have to pause and cover the page because I don't want to give away the pattern. Now, the first flower, as I'm reaching for the paper, the first flower is a blue iris. And on the blue iris, it has the symbol for beauty. And look at now, I mentioned earlier that the patterns um, around the edge, the frame, reminded me of black work. And these two flowers are another perfect example of that um, delicate stitching in gold. So um, that is the blue iris uh, representing beauty. And then the next one is the um, peony, and it's pink. I love pink. It's just who I am. All signed up in a um, single color. Okay, no looking at the pattern over there. So here we have the peony and the word wisdom. Not wisdom. 
don't know where that word came from. My mouth was faster than my brain. The word is peace. Peace. So two great stitches. I could see doing both separately and then um, putting them on an oriental um, Asian themed cross stitch wall. Right, doing these flip through is a lot of work, but I do think it's well worth it. I have recorded this uh, section a couple times because I realized I wasn't um, presenting this beautiful pattern in its glory. And here you can see three distinct fans with the yellow one on top. So if you really like all three of them, you would stitch all three. Unfortunately, the blue and the pink seem to be cut off a little bit around the edge. And if you were okay with that, you might take your favorite one. Personally, I do not see myself stitching these, although gorgeous, gorgeous, and the florals and the colors. The reason I wouldn't stitch these is I found a fan pattern from Doreen Jones in a magazine that I absolutely love. So I, I feel committed to that pattern before I choose another one. If you're interested in knowing what pattern that is, I'll show it on one of my upcoming floss tubes. Just let me know in the comments. Here are four smalls that have been um, created as cards. And we have uh, Longevity, which is the Plum Blossom. Prosperity is the Jasmine. Benevolence for the Iris. And Love for Morning Glories. And, I mean, these would make cute pillows. They would make great cards. Um, you could do all four of them in a line down. I've seen, um, I've seen many patterns that do that. So ultimately, although they're small, you have infinite possibilities as to what you could do with them. All right. So thank you for sticking around with me this long. I have one more um, lady, one more fancy lady, and then the book is done. And um, I'll point out first the circle on the page where you only do a fraction of the stitching and then the full beauty of her fancy lady. All right, so here you can see that you could do a small section of the entire cross stitch, but the entire cross stitch is just so glorious. And you can see that this oriental lady uh, represents wisdom. And we have some autumn leaves. And we see the movement in the air as well as the movement of the fan. And so I love this lady too, just like the other ones I saw. And we do have the chrysanthemums in this chart. And they represent friendship. And I love having friends. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Remember that you can get this chart. I gave you the prices earlier. Just go to Amazon. But um, October 3rd, 2021. So if you're watching this later and you want it, um, you have to gauge that as to if it'll still be there. All right, everyone, take care and have a great week.